Congressman Clyde, thank you for being with me. I, I want to start real quick to, with the announcement that Biden has given another $1.2 billion of aid to Ukraine. That's $55 billion in total. Uh, I, I am tired of a president who sends all of our money overseas while we're dealing with the worst inflation in 41 years. It's absolutely outrageous. Well, thank you, Addison, for having me. Uh, yes, indeed. I mean, you've got to admire the the Ukrainian people, at least for their spirit, their fighting spirit, their willingness to defend their freedoms and defend their sovereignty. But we can do that. But then look at where the president is sending $55 billion. What about our sovereignty? What about our freedom? What about our southern border? I mean, if you would send that $55 billion, or let's just talk about the additional $1.5 billion or so that, that they're about to send, if you would send that to the southern border to help us uh, uh, close that border, uh, to build that border wall, uh, we wouldn't have had the stats like what we saw last month with 239,000 illegal encounters on the southern border. No, this is just unconscionable that what President Biden is doing. He is sending our money and our resources and our weapons over to a country and ignoring, to another, to a, to a foreign country and ignoring our own. This is another example of America last, not America first, which is where we should be, and that is putting American citizens first. Yeah, totally agree, as well as the citizens who are still in the womb. And that's what I want to shift gears to and talk about next is this, uh, this decision from the Supreme Court that has not yet been released. We know why it hasn't been released. These justices are scared for their, for their lives. Um, they're saying now that it could be released sometime next week, but I, I don't blame them if they continue to drag this out and drag this out. Um, but the clock is ticking for, for children in the womb. They need to release this as soon as possible. And it would help if we had Democrats who would agree to give funding to these justices. But 27 of them, like AOC and Rashida Tlaib, voted no on giving additional security funding to uh, Supreme Court justices this week. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely inexcusable that 27 Democrats voted against this bill to increase the security of the Supreme Court justices and their families. And are they running scared? You're probably right. Uh, they probably are running scared. But I want to, right here and right now, just to thank them and to encourage them, every one of these Supreme Court justices, that they are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. If they come out and they overturn Roe v. Wade, it will be one of the greatest decisions in the history of the United States, preserving millions upon millions of innocent lives, children who never got a name, children who never got a birth certificate. I mean, to me, this is, this is the American genocide. That this is the, the greatest cruelty ever, ever brought on the American country. And for this decision to come out and to overturn that, to take the federal cover of law uh, away from the, uh, the abysmal, the abortion uh, mill and send it back to the states would be a miraculous thing. And honestly, it would be a blessing for our nation. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. This is definitely the greatest tragedy in the history of America that we have allowed this butchering of babies to go on uh, for so long and so graphically. Uh, and, and to make matters worse right now, the fact that the only thing stopping that is people who are breaking the law with the permission of the White House. They have signed off to it. Go protest at Supreme Court justices' homes. The White House doesn't care, even though it's a violation of federal law. Chuck Schumer doesn't care. Nancy Pelosi doesn't care. None of them care. Chuck Schumer warned Brett Kavanaugh that he was going to pay a price. And so, so that, that's just, uh, that's the icing on the cake, if you will, and I mean that in the worst way possible, icing on the cake of, of this decision because oh. babies, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here you have Merrick Garland, you know, our attorney general, who is completely ignoring the law. That This is not a, a, a case of prosecutorial discretion. This is ignoring the law and putting Supreme Court justices at risk. We avoided an assassination attempt on Brett Kavanaugh, as you mentioned earlier. But what about all the others? I mean, these people who are blatantly breaking federal law by trying to influence a court decision by parading in front of their homes and protesting in front of their homes. That is a direct violation of federal law. Every one of these people should be found, should be, should be named, should be arrested, and should be charged 
so that others don't follow their footsteps. But no, that's not what's happening. The federal government is turning a blind eye to this. They are turning a blind eye to criminal conduct uh, mm -hmm. in the worst fashion basically promoting it and that is absolutely wrong you know i'm really really glad that merrick garland never got a confirmation hearing but i think you know that this could very well be um, his revenge on the supreme court justices and that's just wrong he's playing politics he's got his hand on the scale and it's despicable couldn't agree more with you there, Representative. Now, real quick, we're almost out of time, but I have to get your thoughts on this. Fauci just tested positive, uh, I believe yesterday, for COVID-19. <laughs> now, keep in mind, last month, Xavier Becerra, Biden's Secretary of Health, got COVID while he was fully vaccinated and boosted. And then this week, he got it again, Xavier Becerra, twice in a month while being fully vaxxed, fully boosted. Maxine Waters got COVID several months back. She was fully vaccinated and boosted when she did. And uh, she just got COVID again too. And so now Dr. Fauci, the science, I saw the Babylon Bee article, the science has tested positive for COVID representative. <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Fauci, who is quad vaccinated and double masked, uh, you know, catches COVID. What does that just go to show you? COVID's going to go around. You're going to catch COVID, whether you're vaccinated or not. And uh, their entire narrative of COVID is falling flat. Uh, and, and Dr. Fauci has shown for what he truly is. And that is a man that cannot tell what the truth is and what the truth isn't. Whatever seems right for the moment is what comes out of his mouth. And it's just, it, you know, uh, no, nobody, nobody should, uh, you know, I don't wish COVID on anyone, um, but I will tell you that, uh, and, and I wish everyone that gets it, you know, would be healthy and would, would get over it. But it's, it's just kind of comical that uh, these people are getting COVID when, um, when the, what they're putting in place uh, the vaccinations, you know, the, the masking, all that really is not helping them. Yeah, we certainly not helping America. We certainly wish Dr. Fauci a, a quick and speedy recovery. Uh, maybe while he's taking Absolutely. time to recover, he can do a bit of self-reflection on the things that he's been saying about <laughs> needing to get vaccinated and boosted and wearing 17 masks. Well, Congressman Clyde, we are totally <laughs> out of time. I really appreciate you being with me today. Thank you. Thank you, Addison. Pleasure. Coming up next.